All right, howdy, boyos. Welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Now, normally, you'd expect me to talk about the campaign, or, as I've been doing lately, play some more Ash and Shadows mod, which I will get back to. Hopefully, I didn't ruin my saves by reverting uh, the game files, but today's a very special day. We're going to be taking a look at the South African arsenal here in Wargame, and then we'll be doing some battles with them in future videos. So they just released these guys like as of a couple hours ago, I woke up, made a coffee, which I'm still not done by the way, so I'll be slurping on this throughout the video, but I figured we could go through the uh, armory together uh, just because, I don't know, it kind of feels like a nostalgic thing to me. I think I did the same for the Yugoslavians, the Finnish, uh, the Dutch, the Israelis, and um, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of like a... a a throwback for me because war game you know has been out for such a long time and i feel like this is kind of getting you know like a it's like a yearly little thing that happens where once a year uh i get to take a like a 45 minute little tour of the armory with you of the latest faction and then you can i guess consider whether you think it's worth it or not now i should mention i have absolutely no clue about um war game competitive stuff i am a noob i have literally zero clue and I'm not sure when I say, for example, oh, this thing has great machine gun stats, you might be thinking, wow, you're an idiot. I'm just here to take a look at the units and give my non-competitive uh, opinion on them. With that being said, we're going to take a look at the logistics tabs first. We'll go left to right. I think we're going to skip naval because I looked through it already and there's nothing new in there that I can see other than just, you know, there's no new ships or anything. Um, so pretty standard logistics tab. We get a, a CP helicopter, a CV helicopter. Um, it's kind of slow at 210, but, you know, it, it's just a CV helicopter and there's nothing really much to say there. Uh, their infantry CV can actually be called in in quite a few variants. Uh, we have the Commandant in a Samuel 50 truck. We have it in a Buffle, which is a very little cute, uh, cute and cool looking truck. Uh, buffle is Dutch for Buffalo. And then we have them in the Caspier Mark II, which really reminds me of like a British MRAP or an American MRAP you'd see in uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, well, I guess not anymore, huh? <laughs> uh, then we have the Caspier K car, which I guess it just comes with a heavier gun. We have the Caspier Mark II comes with a twin uh, 1919, a 30 cal, and then the K car comes with a 20 millimeter on top. The Rattel or Raytel 20, uh, just as a little bit more armor. Uh, you can see it goes from one frontal to two frontal armor, gets a little bit more speed to um, off-road, and um, I guess you keep get to keep that 20 millimeter with some more ammo and a slightly uh, accuracy bonus to it. Then we have the Rattel or Raytel, but we have it with a Milan on top, which is a pretty decent upgrade. Uh, still, you know, it's a, it's a command vehicle transport. I don't think you're going to go too crazy with these, but at least you can protect your CV's infantry with them a little better. Uh, the Rattel 60, which it looks like it has a direct fire and indirect fire mortar, which is very interesting. Uh, the Rattel 90, which is a 90 millimeter anti-tank gun, a little low on the AP power at only eight. Uh, and then it comes with two helicopter versions. We have one with the Puma 330, which just has a, uh, a 7.62 uh, mag, which I think is just the, the, um, the original M240. And we have one in an Oryx, which is five points more expensive, but does go 50 kilometers per hour more. So that's really the infantry. There's, I mean, these guys are very standard. Uh, they have the Vector R1, which very much looks like an FAL or SLR, and they come with the Bren. <clears throat> then we have the Olifant, which is Dutch for elephant. This looks a lot like a Centurion, although I'll be honest with you, I don't really know anything detailed about post-World War II stuff. I'm going to be honest with you. You could have 20 planes lined up next to each other and I'd be like, uh, that looks like an F-16 maybe or whatever. But anyway, this looks like a Centurion. Um, the, the name Olifant or elephant is maybe just because it, they were... Uh, domestically produced. I'm not really sure. Just a regular old CV tank. Then we have the Rattel here with a 50 cal as a CV vehicle. Uh, pretty decent stuff there. Look at all the blue stuff. Uh, high uh, off-road speed, of course, a good road speed, a lot of fuel, and a lot of autonomy, which means you can send this thing driving around the map. It still has two frontal armor. To my surprise, it's not amphibious. I kind of expected this thing to be amphibious the way it looks. Then we have just a Land Rover CV. <laughs> this weird buff and I love this thing. This is like a little 
Star Wars prison transport truck is what it reminds me of. Uh, the the Buffle CV and the Caspier CV. Then we obviously have a FOP, but really not much to say there. A Super Furlon, which this thing, what the hell is this? It's like a, what the hell? It's like an MI6, maybe, but it doesn't look like an MI6 from the front. So this thing is just like some super weird uh, sort of abomination of an MI6 and another helicopter having a baby, and this thing just looks horrible. It does get good supply, but obviously it's just a huge supply helicopter. Then we get the Samil 50 cargo and the Samil 100 cargo. The real difference there is that the, uh, it's, it's not, okay, so it's not four times bigger, it's 4.9 times bigger in supply, but it does have twice the amount of health and twice the amount of off-road speed. So the, the question is, do you want to be big and be seen, but have a lot more supplies? Or do you want to take it a little stealthier, but also, or, you know, want to take it a little smaller? But I don't know, this makes more sense to me to just buy a truck of these, um, just because you get all the benefits of having like twice the off-road speed, which is insane to me, um, a lot more supply and double the strength. Anyway... That's the logistics tab looked at. Let's take a look at the infantry. And this is where it's going to start getting interesting uh, because they have uh, some very... I saw some videos of um, some of the uh, war game, I guess, preferred content creators who are making videos on this. Um, some of their, like... Um, I know they have a name for it, like the Strike Team, I think is what it's called. And uh, there, there's some interesting units that I saw in their videos. Starting off here with the B-10 Unita, which come with a B-10 SPG, and they can come into all of the sort of standard transports we already took a look at. Uh, they're just a five-man SPG team with the HE power, which means they can set up in a in a housing block and actually hit enemy infantry um, and do damage to them. 12 AP isn't crazy high, but they're also not a very expensive unit. Bokop, which looks to be their regular infantry, um, armed with an RPG-7. I don't really know much about the South African army, so it's interesting to me to see SLRs next to Brens, which kind of makes sense, but it has an RPG in there. It's kind of interesting. And again, they can come in all of these sort of standard transports. Um, I do really like the fact that they can come in a Rotel 90, because, I mean, 8 AP power isn't great, but it's only a 15-point transport. So for 25 points, you get yourself a regular infantry squad, with a 90 millimeter armed and 40 accuracy, which isn't horrible transport, that, that's not bad at all, actually. Um, or for five points more, this really kind of reminds me of maybe a Martyr, because you get the Milan on top and you get four missiles for that. So it's not bad. For 30 points, you get a decent um, a decent unit. Then we have the Bokop 90. Let me take a look here and compare these real quick. So the Bokop 90 gets a um, 556, gets a, whoa, that is a weird launcher. That has, okay, 23 AP and 60 accuracy. Uh, that is a pretty nutty launcher. Uh, for five points more, you get a, a whole big upgrade on that. It doesn't look like they get any different transports, though, but the fact that these guys come with a launcher that looks like something that you'd see in Starship Troopers, um, I've never heard of that. The FTS or FT-5, the thing looks nuts. And then 23 AP and 60 accuracy is, is pretty awesome. Um, then we have the Buffaloes, which are their shock infantry. These guys have really cool camo. We have them in 80 and a, a regular 80, or actually no, regular and an 85. And these guys have HK G3s, the, the 21 um, SM, uh, SAW or uh, LMG, and then they carry an RPG, but they're shock trained. Let's compare them to their 85 Contemp. Ooh, okay, they get a Milan. That reminds me, I think, of uh, is it the French that have a unit that has a Milan? Uh, I think it's the French that have a Milan team, though I'm really sort of confusing myself maybe with Ash and Shadows, but um, they, okay, they, they cannot get all of the same vehicles that the Bokop can get. Like, they cannot get the Milan Rattel or the Rattel 90. Um, also, that would be pretty expensive. That would be 55 points for a Buffalo's 85 and a Rattel 90 uh, or, or a Rattel 20. But, I mean, yeah, they're, you know... Having an ATGM infantry on shock is pretty good. Also, 15 men strength, so they can take some shots before they go down. Interesting that they carry AKMs 
an RPDs, but then have a Milan again. This is a very nice, uh, cool, weird mix match of units. Then we have Burger Mag, which um, I'm not sure what M-A-G or Mag stands for. Burger is civilian in Dutch. Um, so this, before I already saw it, this is Militia. 15 points, by the way. Um, nothing really special here. Just a Militia, and they can come in a couple different transports. I mean, I guess if you really want to spend 20 points, you can get a 20mm a armor transport, um, which has one armor everywhere. And then you get the Burger Mag. But uh, yeah, these are just Militia. They do have uh, 15 men strength, which is... Not all of the militias have 15 men strength, so having that 50% extra durability could make a difference, I suppose. I saw someone make a video on these Inflict guys, and they're they're pretty nuts. Um, so they're kind of like a SPG team. Um, they carry this. I don't. I think it's it's called a rocket launcher. I'm not sure what this specifies. That it almost looks like a mortar in this picture, but it has four HE power. Pretty damn good range. They're only regular trained, but these guys are basically your SPG team or one of these recoilless rifle B110s or B10s, but they <laughs> they have them at almost 2,000 meter range. And I saw some of these just annihilate. At one point, like an SAS squad runs out, two of these inflicts and they're all gone. And, and that's pretty nuts. Uh, have these guys in the town, maybe on hold fire, wait for infantry to come close and then unleash. Two or three of these will destroy an infantry squad. That's, that's, that's pretty nuts. I mean, very standard call-in still. We have the Puma of these Kassir cars again. Um, then we have mech infantry, you know, speaks for itself, mechanized infantry, uh, shock trained. They come with, I think this is the French launcher that you see on the uh, French Marines. Um, and, uh, I mean, there's nothing really special about these guys. I mean, they're, I was hoping to maybe see some cool vehicles. Let's compare them to their 90 variant. Okay, we have that crazy uh, launcher again, but actually the only upgrade this time is is a slight bit more AP power, same accuracy and same range on their rockets. Um, I guess, you know, it's the it's the range versus um, the range versus suppression or range versus fire rate difference between their rifles. Um, I don't know. I, I have a hard time seeing which one would be better here. Uh, for the five points extra, I'm not sure if, if it's worth grabbing the 90s all the time. I guess, I guess it depends if you're going to do city fighting or not, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, Milan, very standard unit, you know, nothing really to look at. It's just a two-man team, two-man team, <laughs> two-man team carrying a Milan ATGM. Uh, very standard, you know, they come in very standard uh, vehicle choices. I do really like this uh, Rattel 60, which is kind of crazy because it does, I think, carry this slight tiny millim this tiny mortar. But it does have direct fire. Oh, it's horribly inaccurate. Uh, but it has a 2 HE power artillery. But then the dispersion on that seems pretty big. 2,200 meter dispersion at 4,000 meter range. That doesn't seem to make sense. It's almost like a 50% sort of deviation from the target. But anyway. And we have Padabat or Parachute Battalion or Paratrooper Battalion. These guys have that awesome camo. They're a 10-man shock train unit. These are probably their airborne. And, um, you know, very standard. I kind of wonder if there's a big difference between their... Okay, so it's kind of the same thing. They get the mini SS, whatever that means. I have no clue what that means. But they're twenty-five unit point, twenty-five point unit, fifty points in a helicopter, and it's a downside that these uh, Pumas and Oryxes don't actually carry any miss any rockets underneath or ATGM. So fifty points. I mean, you do have a three hundred uh, kilometer an hour helicopter, but I don't know. Seems a little. I don't know. I don't see anything crazy about these guys. I mean, they're just a regular airborne unit. You know, they're 25 points. What's there to say? Uh, sappers with the flamethrower. Again, there's not really much to say. These are just your regular, uh, you know, engineer infantry, regular terrain, not shock or anything special. And uh, you can get them call it in like these crazy Rattel 60s or the Rattel 90s. Or I don't know. I guess it makes more sense to go for something a little bit more aggressive because these guys have to be aggressive in close range. So probably something like the Rattel 20. So you get a 20 mil. Or maybe that Rattel 90 if you wanted to blow up stuff because you can. Then we have the SASF, which is South African Special Forces. Uh, these guys are interesting. They're only one of these teams that I really don't like in Wargame where they have regular rifles, a good anti-tank and then they have a stupid AA I mean people really love those I mean I've seen I think LSTR for the East Germans and SAS for the British have this combination as well this is like 
just uh this is this garbage i mean for my personal opinion yours might totally vary and not from a competitive perspective but I don't like these crappy, uh, crappy accuracy, low HE power um, AA missiles. This means they don't get a machine gun, which really hurts them, in my opinion. I mean, that's that's a good upgrade. Let's take a look at that. That's a good upgrade. So we go from a okay. I don't know why you did that. That they go from a um, they go to get again up a lust, which I think is the same as the like a '90s French infantry get, which is pretty good. Though you do give up temperature accuracy, get some more AP power, get some more suppression, get twice the fire rate, which means these guys are going to go through their AT in like under a minute. But you do get a stinger. You drop two missiles. You get temperature accuracy. You do get two HE power. You do get 80 suppression. Get a little bit more uh, reload time. You get more range. That's all right. It's not a stinger C. Stinger A is still pretty respectful. I mean, 35 points is a lot. And then you don't get a an infantry unit that can deal with enemy infantry as well because they don't have a machine gun, but it's whatever. Then we have a Stinger here, the Stinger A, very basic anti-air unit. Strela 2, which is just, don't even look at that because that's horrible. Would not consider getting this error with a 30% accuracy. Is that the same? No, it's a 40%. Oh my god. Do not ever get these guys. Does not make sense? And then we have Strela 3, which is, I think, the exact same as these guys had. Oh no, it's a little better. It's very similar. A little, little longer range, but again, kind of bad. I don't know. I don't really see. I would only get uh, the Stinger Unitas with the Stinger A's because at least they have decent accuracy, a little more HP power. Um, they're more expensive, yes, but you know. All right, just had a sip from my coffee. We're moving on to the support tab and uh, the Cactus, which, well, is clearly a Crotal. Oh, it even says it right here. It's clearly just a Crotal. Uh, and then we have the Cactus S A H V, which, oh, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, why did I. So, okay, uh. Okay, a little bit more range, a little bit more accuracy. Uh, you do pay 15 more points. Any upgrades in the speed or field department? No, so you really only gain a tit bit more range, a tit bit more accuracy. But if you're going to drop money on anti-air units, I think I, feel, oh, I like that. Oh, they're slightly different. That's cool. I feel like this is, I mean, they're infrared, which is pretty strong. I always thought the Crotal was really good just because it's infrared AA, so it cannot get seeded. But then you get the Cactus SAH, which just has a tiny upgrade, but that's that's pretty big. I mean, this should outrange, I think, the majority of ATGMs and helicopters. And uh, that's that's pretty strong. And 5% more accuracy, you know, hey, it's 5%. It's still 15 points more. So it's, it's, a, it's a question whether or not that's necessarily worth um, but you can see that this is a prototype, so this only comes with the motorized airborne and marines and support tab, um, whereas this probably comes with all of them. I'd hope it does. Hope it, oh, it, ooh, it doesn't show up in the armor either. Ooh, okay, never mind. Then we have the Roycut, which uh, I don't think Roycut really means anything other than Red Cat. I mean, this might be South African for red, and Cot means cat. So this might mean Red Cat. Uh, if you were to translate it, but maybe that's just kind of useless. Oh my god, this is an upgrade and a half. So this has radar, but it also has double, well not, like 60% more plane range. So this is really uh, maybe a more dedicated anti-plane unit, more so than the Cactus and the, uh, and the Cactus SAHV. But the issue is you are going to need to worry about seed, because it has radar turned on or it needs radar turned on to engage aircraft which includes helicopters by the way so you know if you're going to engage helicopters this one makes more sense if you're going to engage planes then this one makes more sense but you have to have the radar on at the moment you want to fire so the alant which um i think means elk in dutch just it's that little weird 60 millimeter mortar that we see on the ratel 60 uh, it's weird, weird dispersion. This seems really bad for such a short ranged weapon, but I don't know. Um, it's very high rate of fire. That's like one every two, 2.8 seconds or something like that. The Rattel 81, I do like these vehicles a lot. They're pretty cool. They're like a weird BTR striker mix. This is an 81 millimeter mortar. Then this is going to be the 120 millimeter mortar. Very standard. Oh, these guys, they don't, they don't, they didn't change the 
tube size. So it's okay. Well, I mean, that might be a little bit too much detailed, but you know what I'm saying? The tube size should be a little bigger for the 120 mil, but whatever, who cares? I don't really know much about stats. I mean, this seems pretty good. It's all blue. Blue is good, right? Um, the Rover 107. Ooh, that's interesting. It's a, <laughs> it's a little napalm launcher on a Land Rover. Um, decent range. Okay. It's got, what is that? 12 tubes, I think. So that's not bad. It's gets oh, can I not count? That's twelve. It says sixteen. Sure, we're, we'll believe it. Um, you know, yeah, dispersion seems a little less crazy versus the range on on the on the Alons, but whatever. Then we have the Valkyrie, which is what the hell? That is, it's just a transport truck, but they made the bed go up. That is really weird and cool. So this has smoke. And has a decent range, a G power of seven, which is okay. This is more to burn a town, and this is just to hit infantry directly. Then we have the Bataleur, which this thing does look really cool. Eight. This is a cluster one with forty rockets. Okay, not bad. I, yeah, I can see it. It's it's nice. I mean, it looks cool. I'm looking at the looks more than anything. A Sexton, which is actually that World War II artillery piece with a twenty-five pounder. Um, that's horrible range actually for actually for mad dispersion. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, it's 40 points. What are you going to do? Then we have the Rhino, which just looks absolutely, what the hell is that? This looks the top half, the turret and the barrel look like a, an actual like artillery piece. And then this thing just looks like a thing you'd see in like mud or snow runners. Like it looks like a giant scoop. It's got the G5 howitzer. Pretty damn good range, good ag, good dispersion, nice HE power. This might be the South African version of the Caesar or the Caesar in the uh, in the French deck, which is basically very similar. Wheeled heavy artillery. It's a 155. A nice amount of ammo too. You get smoke. Huh. I mean, this is this is an interesting looking unit. 130 points though, but hey, it's a very awesome piece of artillery. It looks freaking badass, too. It's even got some armor. Well, you know, not great, but it might survive one or two enemy artillery rounds before you have to really move it out of the area of effect. Then we have the Easter Vark, which is uh, one of those buffaloes or buffles with a 20 millimeter Ulicon in the back. That looks super weird. I mean, this is this would tip over in a, in a turn, right? That's so weird. Um, nothing really special. Good range on helicopters, though, but it's just a 15-point AA vehicle. What to expect? Then the Bosfark, which has a twin, it looks like twin 23mm ZU in the back. This is the same as the Bataleur truck, but instead of a uh, artillery piece on the back, it's got anti-aircraft on the back. But, I mean, is anyone actually going to use this? Maybe. I don't know. Just 15 points, ZU, 15% accuracy. I mean... Doesn't even have stabilizer, so it cannot even fire in the move, unlike the Easter Vark, which can. Um, does have a little bit... Actually, this thing has better a, a ground range, too. The same armor. I mean, this thing is pretty good compared to this, if you are just if you have to buy one of these. And then the Roy Cut ZA-35, which... What the hell? Is this the same? Oh, that's the Roy Cut's the chassis. I gotcha. I gotcha. So that's the M-35... Decent helicopter range, decent airplane range, 50 accuracy, 25 stabilizer. This just looks like a marksman or a guepard, but instead it's on a, it's on wheels, which is actually pretty good because it means it goes fast. But it does have radar, which means you got to turn it on to shoot stuff with. And well, I don't know. Three armor is all right. It's I'm always really worried about forgetting to turn off radar in PvP games. I guess what you should have it do, right, is have it off by default, and then when you need it, turn it on. But I'm always too slow to, like, mess around with that. Let's move on to the tanks. Next, we have the Logim. This almost looks like a leopard, but I don't know if it is a leopard. It really reminds me of one. It's got a 120 millimeter gun, good accuracy, good AP power, 20, mil 20 front points. But the thing is with the South Africans and a lot of these other minory nations is that they don't have a lot of high point, high quality tanks. They have one 155 point tank, and then the next best is an 80 point tank, which is almost well, basically half of this point's worth. But let's start the front. The Oliphant Mark I or Elephant. Um, again, I think this might be um, a Centurion, but I'm sure people are going to lose their shit if it's wrong. But it, this kind of reminds me of uh, of it. 
from what I think a centurion is, but I don't know. Steel Division and War Game are different. I need to get this off my chest. I like Steel Division because the phases mean people will bring out shittier stuff. In Steel Division, you'll see Panzer IIs, Panzer threes. You know, uh, you'll see like lightly armored, crappy tanks because people are sort of forced to get them. In War Game, there's nothing stopping you from just buying like. 19 of these, well, it obviously depends on the availability, but um, what I'm saying is you can really go out of your way and get a very heavy stack deck and go straight off the bat. You can open the battle. You can start, you can spawn in five of these and four of these or two of these and seven, just like whatever the availability is in game, right? And the enemy might bring 100 T-34 85s. You're still going to win unless they you run out of ammo. But that's why I like Steel Division's phase system a little better. It actually has all units be viable between brackets. Um, whereas in war game, I really feel like these early, early cheap tanks aren't really that viable. I mean, there's not even an armor difference between these. Just a little range difference, accuracy, stabilizer, and AP difference, which is good. But it's weird because this is the same gun. So maybe they have a PCR on board suddenly where the AP power went up. But obviously it's to balance the tank. I get that. But that's the Elephant Mark 1A. Then the Elephant Mark 1B is uh, this is not a same tank anymore. That's actually a really nice looking. This is an L73. It's a British gun, I think. And that is better accuracy, better stabilizer, better AP. Loses the machine gun, no, but I don't know how useful that is. Gets better frontal armor. This is a decent tank, decent workhorse tank. And then we have the Elephant Mark 1B Optimum, which does sound really cool. Gets four more frontal armor, a little bit more side and back armor. And um, this has like a leopard, like super leopard inspired turret, if it's not a real leopard. It is, I think it's just an upgrade system to the Elephant Mark 1B. But you can see it's got side skirts, it's got that really leopardy front. This is a really nice looking tank. This actually looks better than the Logim, in my opinion. This is, doesn't look as good as the Elephant Mark 1B Optimum, which I also like the fact that it's called Optimum. It's like, we have literally done everything we could to make this tank as optimum as possible and it just looks like a space tank anyway moving on to the Roycott 76 mark 1c now people who play arma might recognize this as that um tank they added in a tank dlc 76 millimeter gun good accuracy good stabilizer uh i saw some people really memeing around with these two um, the 105 and the 76, I mean, there isn't really a big difference between them other than obviously the gun. And the gun is is interesting. You get more range, you get five more AP, one more HE. Um, you actually gain, don't ask me how, you gain one rate of fire on the main gun, even though it's a bigger gun, which I would assume takes longer to reload, but maybe they have an auto loader or something. But this is pretty nuts, 65% accuracy, but 60% stabilizer. So this thing can basically have the same accuracy while going full speed at 150 kilometers an hour and still try to hit targets with its 105 millimeter gun. Now, 17 AP isn't the best, but if you have four of these rolling down a road, it's only 200 points. That's the same as like one and a little bit of a top tier tank. I would bet four of these, okay, I would bet three of these, which saves you five points for the Logim, three of these could take out a Logim. I'm going to go ahead and say that right now. There's no way that they cannot do that. There's no way that three of these in, an, in a just straight up fight couldn't knock out a Logim. Obviously, your goal isn't to stop and engage from range. What I think you want to do is just fast move down the road and they'll start engaging. And that's pretty nuts. That's actually pretty, pretty freaking nuts because this is a 60% stabilizer. Then under recon, we have the Alouette, the same helicopter we had as a CP helicopter or a CV. We have the Elon 90, which is, uh, this reminds me of, uh, I think I've seen it before in Wargame. I think it might be French. It's just got a 90 millimeter gun on a recon vehicle. And we have uh, one with an ATGM, which is... I don't know, 35% accuracy isn't that great, but 20 AP is pretty good. So when you hit, you hit pretty hard, but you got to hit first because it's got that horrible accuracy of 35%. And then we have a Roycott 76, but with a freaking recon roll. So it has very good optics versus medium optics. That's not horrible, not horrible, but very good optics is, is obviously better and it's the same. Okay, it's 10 points more because it's a 76 version, but that's, that's all right. 
Um, this is only a 10 point difference too. So the Roycott 105 is actually in a, in a very good spot, I'd say. Um, then we have para pathfinders. I mean, they're just your recon team. Oh no, they went the Navy seals route. They gave them a grenade launcher. I mean, maybe people really love that. I have never found Navy seals to be effective with their grenade launcher. I always wish they had a T, uh, hey, they're shock recon infantry, 10 man squad. They got a grenade launcher. I mean, if you like that, great. If you don't like that, like me, then it's like, whatever. A rover recon, 25 points, doesn't have anything. It just looks like a UAZ set up back there with like 19 other seats. SASF sniper, which this is an interesting one. The NTW20, 700 meter range. 95% accuracy, 2 p power, and that means they can basically knock out light transports, uh, BTRs, even BMPs, which I think only have three frontal armor, at least they do in Ash and Shadows. The second these guys see the side of a BMP, they can knock it out at almost 1.8 kilometers. That's not bad. You know, obviously elite training, stealth exceptional, very good optics. These guys are pretty interesting. Um, nothing really specifically in a vehicle that would have been cool would have been cool to see like a nice vehicle for them but it is what it is and then we have trackers which are just a regular five man recon squad to carry a brendan and slr nothing really there and then this crazy looking helicopter which i've seen before it looks like just like someone booped it on the nose really hard it's a good optics, which isn't great. A little recon helicopter. It doesn't even go very fast, but this is just super weird and crazy looking. And it's got a gun on it, if you like that, for a recon helicopter. Okay, vehicles. This We've already seen some of these. The Buffalo, the Cuspier, the Cuspier Cave, the 20 mil. Um, the Ferret Entac. We definitely think this is... Oh, God. Not, I think this might be French, too. I think this is the same thing as we saw on the recon tab. Oh, it's a little different, actually. I'm stupid. Uh, this has a ni Mark 19, has a 19-19-30 cal, and it has ATGMs, again, with meh accuracy, but they're only 15 points. So if you set up three of these, technically, mathematically speaking, one of those three is going to hit, and then you're hitting something for 20 AP power. That's not bad. That's really not bad. Uh, the Ferret Mark II Milan. This is, uh, <laughs> okay. Slight upgrade. A uh, little bit more range. Well, actually, a bunch more range. Uh, less AP power, but more accuracy. So if you want to spend money on... Actually, it's kind of weird. It's the really only reason you'd get this is for the better range. Because the accuracy is negligible and the a AP power is less. So you want to get this for the better range, I suppose. The Rattel... Ooh, I like this. The 12... Okay. 12 Sackloss Swift Missiles. Good range. Good accuracy. Pretty decent AP power. But they're a 50-point ATGM unit. So, the Rattel 20, the Rattel 20 Milan. You can just buy these vehicles separately from their infantry. The Rattel 60 mortar, the Rattel 90 gun. I mean, these, are, again, are interesting. I don't really know how useful they're going to be as just um, call-in units without infantry in them. I mean, just call them with infantry and use them after that, but whatever. If you want them separately, you can get them. The Rover 106 is one of those crazy recordless rifle jeeps. The Ferret Mark II, this is a recordless rifle ferret. All right, I mean, but what's there really to say? It's a huge recordless rifle. It's actually got 3 HE power, which is pretty nice. Um, and then the FSV, which I think, isn't this... What's the difference here? Is there any difference between these two? I mean, I can see, I can see there are differences to five points and the 10 more around. So this is a dedicated fire support vehicle and this one is not. I mean, the only difference is five points for 10 rounds. This might be changed in the future. I like the cam on this one a lot better. Um, but I don't see the point in, in spending five points for 10 extra rounds. This thing is never going to live long enough to fire all 48. Honestly, it will not. And then we have a truck, which I don't, oh, I see. This is okay. This is just a transport. This probably should be speed and logistics tab, but there it is. Okay. Helicopters. The Alouette K car, just a little 20 millimeter armed helicopter. What am I going to say? It's just a little crappy helicopter with a door gun. Uh, the Puma 330, which is the transfer helicopter. Same goes for the Oryx, just an upgraded version. Then we have the XTP. Oh, pff, all right. Uh, okay. This is a one hell of a Puma. Um, a 20 mil. 
we have uh, 68 SNEB rockets, and it also carries some anti-air missiles, which is actually pretty good. So we have an anti-air helicopter. Um, not crazy stats or anything on those, but hey, two of these could probably knock out an MI-24 or two with a uh, decent range, actually, and all right, accuracy, 4 g power. It's a shame you only get two of these. This thing looks nuts. That looks heavy as balls. And then we have an upgrade over that, or a side grade, I suppose. Uh, you lose half the rockets, but you get eight of these Ingwe missiles, which are freaking nuts. 2,800 meter range, 70 accuracy, 50 stabilizer, and 26 AP. And then the Royvok, which is sort of a combination of the two. It almost looks like a Eurocopter, uh, like the Tiger, the French cat. It has the 20 millimeter nose cannon. It has those Ingways again, has eight of them, which I think are the exact same between these two. But then it also carries Mistral rockets, which I love. They're really good, good range, good accuracy, good HE power. So you get four chances of knocking down an enemy helicopter or God forbid aircraft with this, which is not bad. It's actually really not bad. Um, I love this thing. And um, I think this could, this may mean a red Falcon. I mean, Valk means Falcon. Roy could mean red, so this means Red Falcon, I think. Uh, it's nice camo, too. Actually, this is a really nice helicopter. Moving on to the air tab, and this is where I'm going to not know what these are based on, so please do uh, not attack me in the comment section as you've gotten this far. We have the Buccaneer, which this, I don't recall seeing this before in game. It's just a very cheap, well, I say cheap, it's a cheap air to ground, uh, you know, anti 38. 30 AP power is pretty nuts. But it's got horrible accuracy. It's going to fire all four missiles, and then you hope... I mean, if one of these four missiles hits, you're going to knock out a tank, but... Okay, that's an issue. 0% ECM and 600 speed. So this is really a uh, good luck chap, one-way ticket, and if he survives, great. If you knock out the enemy vehicle that you're targeting and this guy dies, it's probably a worthy trade because you're not going to send us after T-34 85s. You're going to send us after uh, top-tier tanks, maybe CV tanks, um, stuff like that. Pretty nice, weird-looking plane, um, but I love this action. This is pretty good. I mean, it's just a one-way ticket to hell kind of plane. Low accuracy, no ECM, no basically falls out of the air kind of speed. But yeah, good, good missile though. The Carver, which uh, I want to say I know what this is. Is it like a Saab? Oh my god, people are gonna make fun of me so hard in this part. It's fine. You can make fun of me. I don't really care. Um, Good, you know, standard uh, air superiority fighter, it looks like. 30 millimeter gun, who cares about guns on an ASF? Uh, some short range anti helicopter, mostly missiles, though also decent against planes. And then two long range darters with 70 accuracy, uh, 5 HE power. I mean, this isn't a bad ASF. It's not a great ASF either, I don't think. It's pretty. Oh, actually, I, I take that back. 1,000 kilometers an hour, 50% ECM. That's actually pretty decent, I think. Cheetah D. Okay, I definitely recognize this, but I can't place it. And this is where I I have no clue about all the different planes in Wargame. Uh, this is Seed. We get those same darters that we got on the Carver, uh, but they... Oh, actually, it's slightly different. It's the V3C versus the U darter. Uh, what does that really mean, though? Oh, okay, less accuracy and less stabilizer, but that's it. Um, this is You're not buying this for the anti-helicopter or even anti-plane deal. You're buying this to deal with Seed, and it's whatever... Wait, shouldn't Seed be AP? Weird. I really figured Seed would be AP. So it can go straight. Let's, let's, let's just, I think, I think it should be AP. Weird, 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 weird. The F-86 F Sabre, I mean, this is, I always love the front of the Sabre. Looks like a very, look, it's super happy plane. Happy to see you. It is carrying a bunch of rockets. I mean, again, this is a one-way ticket to hell kind of plane or maybe very early game when the enemy doesn't have its AA set up yet. Uh, strafe uh, infantry squad with this and they're gone. Um, the Impala Mark II, <laughs> it's pretty much the same as the Sabre, just twice the amount of rockets and um, it carries a heavier gun. That's what this is. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's the difference. It's got a bigger gun and twice the amount of rockets and you pay five points extra. Probably the availability on this will be less. I do like the camo on these. These are really nice. The Mirage, okay, obviously we know the Mirage is based on Mirage. Um, I mean, this is all very standard, crappy, 
planes that no one's ever going to buy. Um, crap. I mean, this might be the one sort of redeeming factor, but even that's super low range for an anti-air missile. Uh, the Mirage F-1CZ, that's a decent call-in if you really have a helicopter problem. But outside of that, I don't see a point. The Cheetah C, uh, this has, again, this is a pretty decent ASF. If we compare these two real quick, it's got uh, those... It's got those V4R darters, but then it has different short-range darters, which are, I think, similar to the Cheetah D. So it's uh, it's all right. I mean, it's slightly worse than the Carver, but you also save 10 points. I think the, okay, and the ECM is also 10% less. So you do lose out on 10% D ECM. I don't know if it's worth mentioning. This carries 130 mil. This carries 230 mils. I really doubt anyone's buying these planes to deal with anything on the ground. Unless it's like a last stand, last resort kind of deal. The Mirage 3EZ, that's one of those uh, crazy missiles. This one is compared to the uh, Buccaneer. This one carries four inaccurate ones. This one carries one super accurate one. Uh, actually, that's a lie. I don't know why it's that super accurate. Why? Oh, okay. This is like... What? Why would you just have one? That doesn't seem to be... Okay, sure, yeah. That doesn't seem at all very effective. One is a very crappy, inaccurate missile, and two AA missiles. So, I mean, I guess you can call this in if you run a try. You'll have to call three of these in to hopefully hit the target with that accuracy. Mirage F1Z, it's a cluster bomber, not much to see there. It's just a Mirage with cluster bombs on it. The Cheetah E, which is a Cheetah with uh, air-to-ground bombs, actually only carries... No, eight's not bad. It's not great. What's the ECM on these suckers? Zero, 10, and 30. 30 is all right. And then 30% for the Cheetah D2, which is one of those uh, air-to-ground laser-guided bombs. Nothing really special here. I mean, 30 ECM is all right. 900 kilometers seems to be all right. The Vampire FB-52... <laughs> Uh, nice. The 1953 Vampire, huh? I know this from War Thunder. It carries two Napalm, 50 points. Really not much to say there. I think it has four Hispanos, but I don't know if it counts them as one or as four, but I believe it comes with four of them, technically speaking. Um, really not much to say here. 6% ECM, or 0% ECM, of course, and then 600 kilometers an hour. And then last but not least, I don't think you pronounce this Canberra. I think you pronounce it Canberra. And then it has eight 500 kilogram bombs, which is pretty decent. Um, it's not very super fast, though. Um, it's got 0% ECM as well. So this is kind of like a weird bomber. It's like expensive. It's got a good amount of bombs, but it has 0 ECM and no speed. So I'm not really sure what you want to do with that. Uh, but a naval tab, like I said, I don't think there's anything super different here. Um, it's just... I was hoping if there was maybe like a new ship or something, but obviously these are just your standard units that we can get in the uh, in any of the like regular tabs. So with that being done, uh, we're going to be doing some gameplay of the South Africans very very soon. For now, I hope you guys enjoy. Love to see you in the next one. Cheers.